this is something interesting actually because uh, already back in 24 uh, Stone published a very interesting paper on Iraq's situation of looting, correlating looting with population density. And the interesting evidence is that in most of the cases, looting occurs close to settlements and villages. Because also we have to think about who is the player uh, in uh, making looting. Uh, Ariana said uh, in the previous presentation that also common people uh, just for uh, um, for survival, is going to to loot uh, cultural objects. So, of course, uh, social media and the recent political events uh, have passed the message that there are some organizations, uh, uh, quite international, uh, that basically drive looting. But we have also evidence since a very long time ago. Um, that also normal people tend to loot, but just because it's also a cultural uh, phenomenon. Um, in Apamia, uh, the um, looting happened uh, basically uh, uh, throughout uh, the, the whole period, uh, starting from the Syrian civil war, and we have, of course, evidence, uh, particularly Jess Kazana uh, from the United States, that uh, this looting happened in relation to uh, military occupation of the site and um, military and crime organization. But this is happening uh, close to, to the town. So uh, I would not say that looting is happening because uh, uh, the area is, is less populated. We have also examples in Egypt, very close to archaeological site. So, not necessarily. I would say that where is less control or a different control. Because in Akamia, for instance, we know that there was uh, military control. So, in that case, it was something that was allowed for other purposes. Thank Thanks. you. Do we have any question? Um, I, I have a question very quickly because I'm aware of time, clearly. Um, um, all, most of the examples, actually, all the examples we have seen so far relate to, to quite remote area, and this connects very well to these questions. So, in your observation of papers and uh, your own experience, what happens when we are speaking about the urbanized area? Or, I mean, not so remote areas like Middle East, uh, I'm thinking about South Italy, Central Italy. We have huge problems there, we both come from Italy and we are aware of the situation. I assume that Spain or Greece might have the same problem as well. Surprisingly, maybe even England might have this kind of problems. So, uh, what is, in your opinion, uh, is still a good approach? Yes, it is. We know, but uh, probably it's easier to, you know, to find out that looting is occurring just going by and you know somebody in the area noticing something strange. But what is your experience of what you have seen as experience of other scholars writing? about the urbanized area or you know more central area area you know, in Europe or in other in other countries like US Australia and so on yeah that's uh, again another key point uh, um, yes the evidence in the literature is that uh, most of the groups are focused on remote areas just uh, because uh, the inaccessibility of course favor the use of remote sensing uh, I'm aware, also uh, in the Middle East, but also in Western countries, that there are several incidents of looting. Interestingly, in urban areas, these methods uh, are more challenging, because uh, I've showed you uh, examples in extracting uh, star texture rather than uh, spectral signatures. Uh, an urbanized environment uh, does have a spectral signature completely different, overlapping with those uh, that may suggest the presence of looting. And also there's a problem, the visibility. Uh, more dense is the urban areas, um, less uh, visible is the feature. I have an example in Bosra, south of Syria. Uh, it's, a, it's a city. Uh, and we have seen some evidence uh, of looting. But in that case, to be honest, with automated change detection uh, could not be detected because uh, it could appear like uh, a digging hole uh, just in a garden. So um, that's something that we need to work more. 
And I think that in the Western countries, uh, most of them of the studies have focused on the roots of traffic uh, routes rather than spotting the areas because unfortunately we know historically which are the areas looted. I mean, for instance, the UNESCO site of Cervetri, uh, close to Rome, in a very high densely populated area, free, uh, visited by tourists, and uh, you never an aging, but it's, it's still happening. Pompeii as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. So we move um, to the next presentation uh, from Francesca Cignan and again Deodato Tapete that is going to be presented by Deodato on assessing manual, unsupervised, supervised and automatic change detection, detection method for detection of looting in Apamea, Syria. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I will go quickly uh, also because um, uh, I have already introduced some of, uh, of the techniques before. Um, Apamea uh, is pretty famous, I'm afraid, uh, for looting. I have noticed that also Ariana used uh, as a background uh, picture uh, because uh, you will see in a second Apamea was one of the first Middle East uh, archaeological sites that basically uh, come out in all the social media because in 2012 uh, was one of the first examples uh, of looting happening as a consequence of the Syrian civil war. Uh, but uh, starting from the beginning, Apamea is a, an archaeological site very famous also for its beauty and the fact that uh, it was built in the Hellenistic period in a very top position. So uh, the strategic position of this city um, is uh, distinctive as you can see in uh, these two digital elevation models the Aster GDM, but also the 3 meter uh, special resolution Tandemax uh, dam generated with star data and the eye detail allow you also to identify some of the features, the anthropogenic features characterizing the site. Uh, the site interestingly is close to an artificial lake created by three dams and before uh, looting uh, uh, became the major threat for this site actually was the, the artificial uh, lake uh, the major threat uh, because of the stability of the dams. Um, the city was uh, absolutely spectacular. Like uh, all Hellenistic uh, cities, uh, had a very long uh, card maximus with a fantastic colonnade uh, still uh, surviving uh, the, um, the ancient walls made by um, the Emperor Justinian and also some areas like the theatre in the bottom left uh, that was at that time waiting for someone uh, rebuilding it. And as you can see, I was just mentioning before, in the, in the background you see uh, Alcalat Medico, which is uh, a town um, now a, a modern village. So just to say that this site is not isolated, it is uh, embedded in the Hama region, uh, which is uh, um, emergingly populated. I've just reported that the sentence uh, in the motivation um, proposed to UNESCO um, 30 years ago uh, to propose uh, Apamea to be included in the World Heritage Sites. It's in French, but you can understand probably the meaning. Apamia was proposed because it was still not fully excavated and it was considered a huge reservoir of archaeological records. But unfortunately, this also was the motivation for looters. The situation prior to looting was this one. So, in general, um, in the 30s, there were several archaeological missions uh, that basically progressively excavated almost 40% of the site, which is uh, the right side. Uh, that portion of the site is uh, state-owned. The left side is privately owned land. That's a key uh, feature to remember. Just as Anna correlated uh, this uh, uh, property situation, with, um, with the temporal spread of looting. And you probably may think that the state-owned part was less looted than the privately owned land. But unfortunately, that's not true. Uh, in mid-2012, UNESCO called for international efforts 
to raise awareness of the situation and the, the scale of looting was defined uh, as industrial because it was made, as I mentioned before, with bulldozers and machinery. Uh, as you can see, they are repeated looting all patterns, uh, usually less than one meter deep, in some cases even a few meters. This depends uh, on the looter's perception that they are going to find something. Uh, and with the planimetric shape that we used, um, as I showed very quickly in the previous slide, to model uh, these features, to recognize them automatically in uh, satellite data acquired in radar wavelength. So, we, are, we used, uh, in the last five years, a multi-sensor assessment of looting in Apamia, just to demonstrate that we can combine different methods and different data. So starting from a Digital Globe, uh, the first appearance of looting was discovered with Digital Globe, so we visually identified the looting features and manual mapped them uh, with high accuracy, uh, finding uh, exact match with other published papers. Then in 2014, 2016, we used uh, the sterling spotlight data from the German Aerospace Center space mission called the Terrace Rex, providing less than one meter resolution data. And we use the SAR texture extraction method that I showed you before, combined with supervised classification and uh, a change detection that automatically provided um, the appearance of looting marks. Then, we use Sentinel-2 because in mid-2015, Sentinel-2 data were, uh, were accessible to the, to the community with the first of the two satellites and then in 2017 the second satellite, uh, satellite uh, uh, was launched and therefore five days of temporal frequency of observation was reached in cloud-free condition. And finally, as we have our own Earth observation space mission, Cosmos Skymid, we, which is equal to the Terrestrial X1 from the German Aerospace Center, we are using this new data to continue tracking at high resolution uh, the appearance of looting. So the manual mapping, uh, basically, if you go on Google Earth, you will see this sequence starting from uh, uh, mid-2012, so exactly one year when we commonly say that the Syrian civil war started, uh, looting appeared um, in, uh, in an unprecedented um, uh, fashion, uh, but this is because there was no special coverage with satellite data. So at a certain point, we found the evidence of this uh, massive looting, but this did not happen uh, um, likely in, uh, in just one month. It happened uh, throughout the period between the last image and the image in April 2012. So one of the first uh, um, observations was that our perception of our looting rate is, uh, uh, depends also on the frequency of observation. At that time, in March 2014, we concluded that 44% of the total site was looted. And as you can see, the distribution is mostly on the right, on the eastern part of the site which is uh, state-owned, while the private-owned uh, um, land on the left, so on the western side, uh, was not so heavily looted as the state-owned uh, land. Interesting pattern that just Kazana commented uh, very, um, very precisely, also in relation to the military occupation of the site. At the very beginning, I mentioned that this site was built intentionally at the very top uh, top hill uh, position, and again, this was used during the wartime. Uh, we then moved in 2014 to look at the looting happening in Apamia in a project with the German Aerospace Center from 2014-2016 using 24 centimeter azimuth resolution data acquired every two months, so in a very consistent way. For the first time, this site was uh, monitored regularly. So our assessment could be compared month by month. Uh, using the very high resolution of this data, we were able, for instance, to extract the, the feature uh, as the SAR texture, and this is not an enhancement. So it's not, it's an, 
not just a way to visualize, uh, visualize better the data. This is the amplitude information, so the amount of data that comes back to the sensor uh, from the object that has been illuminated on the ground by the space sen uh, sensor. But in this way, uh, we have extracted, uh, with the calculation that I have reported before in the previous slide, um, the way looting holes alter locally the surface roughness. So it's a, a derived information that we can use in supervised classification to obtain a direct spatial extent mapping of looting. Of course, um, surface roughness can be confused between different features. I was mentioning before the false positive. So there's also a masking out step where you remove features that were already there and they were anthropogenic features or urban features that are not related to looting. And if you do that, 45% of the site was looted as of October 2014, with an increase of 1% between March and October 2014. So a gradual uh, increase. Uh, we use then uh, this amplitude change detection approach to distinguish the changes in amplitude uh, uh, signal from one image to the next one. Identifying situation, the second problem, of a new looting hole appearing as a, a distinctive pattern of increase and decrease of amplitude in the image. Uh, we had also reverse situation, looting holes that were backfilled, so we have uh, the reverse uh, spatial patterns of uh, amplitude changes, a situation where we do not have uh, changes at all, so that soil is still virgin and untouched, and also a sequence of systematic looting holes, because uh, I, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, in this case bulldozers and heavy machinery were used. Using these methods, uh, relying on very regular time series, we could derive a dynamic mapping of looting. I was uh, talking uh, about outputs. This is one of the outputs that we can produce. So not only measuring the looting rate, but also how many looting goals uh, are, um, are spread in a certain sector, and if there's a change. So it's a very dynamic process. So you, you see that from October 2014 to February 2015, we had an increase of looting, and this is something real because we could compare on the same um, uh, time interval uh, in a consistent way. So with no interference in uh, parameters of satellite data acquisition, but also interestingly, a different spatial spread. You see that looters from 2014 to 2015 moved to the eastern sector again, from the private homeland to the state homeland, going towards the areas where archaeologists since the 30s excavated houses, Roman houses. And again in 2015, an increase, and in this case a densification. So you see that looters not only change the areas where they loot, but they may concentrate on a certain area because they perceive that it's opportunistic to, to dig in that area, and they intensify their action. Um, at the end of the period monitored with Terraselex, we found the matching evidence with optical very high resolution data used by Azor initiative in the southwestern part of the site, which was previously uh, unexcavated, uh, dedicated just to pasture, um, close to the theater. But as you can see, the combined use of SAR texture and uh, spectral signatures in optical, very high resolution images can show you the advantage of combining these two data. Because uh, SAR texture in this case was able on the, on the eastern side, so on the left side, to see um, rejuvenated looting in a previously looted area, which was not so clear in the optical image if you compare um, the contrast in the spectral signature, just in the visible bands. Moving to 2015 2017, we realized that Sentinel 2 could be used in this case. Uh, we know that the eye resolution uh, to 10 meter 
is not allowing the same fine detail mapping as a very high resolution image, like a commercial image from Digital Globe. But in a case like Apamia, where looting is so extensive, we can use Sentinel-2, which is free, and, uh, and it's very uh, repeatedly, highly repeatedly acquired every five days if there are no cloud coverage, uh, to see if uh, there's an opportunity to zoom in with purchased very high resolution imagery. So Sentinel-2 could be used also to plan even more investigation at higher resolution. This is uh, the southwestern part, uh, and as you can see, is astonishing even at high resolution the extent of spreading of this phenomenon just in one area. And this matched exactly with the nearly coeval, very high resolution image from Digital Globe. So that's an example uh, to demonstrate that not necessarily we need to use straightforward, the very high resolution images which are costly and if are not accessed through agreements, so uh, um, waived uh, from the costs of reproduction, we cannot map in detail the extent of looting. So it's a combination and integration. I'm not saying that we need to replace a very high resolution with high resolution, but I'm saying do not discard the possibility that Copernicus Sentinel-2 is offering. Another example, I mentioned that before that looting goals tend to weather because uh, uh, they are exposed to, uh, to weathering processes. So with this method, because we have a very highly temporal frequency of observation, we can observe not only the, uh, the spreading of looting, but also measure um, the uncertainty that this continuous time series at very high resolution uh, could, uh, could bring uh, if we do not track along uh, over time the spreading of looting as well as the weathering because as you can see in the bottom left image in April 2016 we were able to map that spot that's nearly circular spot of new looting that in May 2017 after one year seems uh, not present anymore but that's not true uh, it's still there it's only weathered so at this resolution which is coarse of course we could not capture that. But if we have a very detailed and frequent time series, we cannot miss areas that have been already looted. Just to conclude, we are doing the same stuff with Cosmos Kamed as we did with Terrasarex, and I'm afraid looting is still happening. This is an image from last month. Um, just coming back, you see in May 2017, looting was above the second main deck minus, the straight line crossing uh, the Cardi Maximus. So at that time in 2017, looters uh, did not uh, reach these houses, but now they are. In blue, you see the effect of surface roughness due to new looting. So it's still happening and we are still monitoring. So to conclude my presentation, for the Apamia case study, we can make some conclusions. <laughs> After these five years of monitoring, we can say that looting has never really stopped. But the phenomenon showed that different patterns. It changed not only in severity and frequency and, uh, um, and uh, spatial distribution, but also in typology. Most happened in 2012, 2014, but our vision of the progress was uh, hampered by the discontinuous time series of very high resolution data in Google Earth, which were not so frequent. In 2013-2015, we have uh, more evidence of reworking and repeated looting rather than a real expansion of looting. Starting from 2015, instead of looting again start to spread uh, in new sectors, particularly in the southern parts of the site, reaching also uh, some excavated areas. The lesson learned from testing different methods, visual identification and manual mapping. They have a clear pro, uh, process, accuracy based on the expert knowledge. It's very difficult to um, uh, misclassify a looting feature with soil stain rather than plants or other anthropogenic features, but it's very time consuming. 
some texture and supervised classification have the advantage that objectively we can extract uh, this uh, surface roughness uh, property of the looting goals and see where looting goals says an alteration of the virgin condition is happening. But of course there are some false positives, especially if we are in an area where we have also other type of features, like urban features. So we need to remove them. So at some point, these automated methods uh, require uh, manual adjustment uh, towards the end of the chain. Some amplitude change detection, again, is an objective method. There's no visual identification. It's, it's just based on the, on the objective uh, um, recognition by the software that amplitude has changed but there may be some interference factors like soil moisture. Uh, Sentinel-2 images, my recommendation is not to forget that there are also this type of facilities now, so we need to be open-minded and think that this data could be a way to screen this type of sites where looting is extensive. Of course, if you are searching for individual looting pits, Sentinel-2 is not adequate. But if you have already a hotspot where you know that looters are repeatedly looting the site, of course, this could be a, a way to quickly search for evidence and then plan a targeted campaign. Finally, spectral indices. As I said, they can improve the way we delineate in an automated way looting features, but depends on the actual environmental conditions like if it's a rock environment, a vegetated environment, if uh, it's a, a type of looting goal with a certain size, uh, with a certain property, uh, if these indices uh, uh, work well. So uh, we need to test. And if you want to know more about all these methods, these are the references and I'm uh, available to share the, the papers. And with that, I thank you for your attention.